As the budget options we have access to in this hobby have expanded in both quality and availability over the past few years, the hobby itself has gotten to a point where hype is dying down. Jim K keycaps are sitting on vendor sites, and a good sounding high quality custom mechanical keyboard is easier to come by, with boards like the QWERTY keys lineup and the Zoom series taking the hobby by storm. With all of this in mind, you may wonder why you should pay a premium for a keyboard in today's market, and why am I so excited about this latest high end custom in my hands? Today, I want to look to answer a few questions. What sets a high-end custom apart in 2023? What I personally look for in a custom keyboard? And why designers like Bayern Lenya are great for the keyboard hobby? Bayern Lenya is the label behind Finnish designer Magnus, or Bion, focusing on products, renderings, music videos, and both 2D and 3D art. Although we're only here for the keyboards, the artwork as well as the keyboards themselves are pretty stunning, fitting in well with the brand identity that's been curated around things Bion finds interesting. I for one really like the music influence on the designs, from the latest batch of the bias boards like the one I have here being colour matched to specific Genelec speakers, to the brand logo which was designed by the one and only Paul Nicholson, who amongst many other things is probably best known for designing the extremely famous Aphex Twin logo. Speaking of the bias, the board itself has a great story behind its conception, and you know I love a bit of history. Although the bias R2 wasn't the first board released by Bion, all previous runs have been private group buys, with the OG bias releasing as an invite only group buy in 2020 as a result of offering to sign a custom TKL for a few Discord members. As someone who had struggled with their mental health, the positive experience and encouragement received as a result of the process gave Bion the confidence to share the design, and this, amongst other things in his personal life, ultimately led to the public release of the bias as the R2 model. Now the story goes a little deeper than that, and I couldn't word a man's story better than he can himself, so if you'd like to check out the whole story for yourself, I've linked the interest check in the description below. When I set out to make this video, I really wanted to explore why I wanted this specific keyboard over others. You know, I wanted to find out what makes keyboard different to me compared to everything else on the market. And out of the plethora of customs we have, both high-end and mid-tier, what is it that makes me gravitate towards some boards over others? But before that, let's talk about the keyboard in my hands a little bit more. The Bias R2 wasn't a straight rerun, but a complete redesign of the original, retaining the logo around the arrow cluster, the shape of the back weight, but refining other things like the shape of the side profile, the implementation of the Bion Lenya logo, and I don't even know how to describe this, but... The top case goes over the bottom case to the point where you get this really nice seam along the bottom. Where the original board was top mount, the R2 uses an evolved grommet mount, a mounting method designed to provide a feeling like gasket mount while implementing some well needed quality of life for rebuilding, no messing around with boron foam strips and automatically aligning the plate assembly to where it needs to be in the board. Similarly to the tab poles used in a number of Geon's offerings, the silicone grommets come in two different levels of hardness to really dial in the feeling of your build to your personal preferences. The last big change seen in round 2 compared to the first round is seen within the case. These waves allow for the PCB to flex without running the risk of switch pins making contact with the case. The exposed weight also looks great and a very interesting implementation of the usual channel for the JST cable while keeping the same aesthetic that's seen around the rest of the board. And that leads me nicely on to what I really look for in custom keyboards. And that's within the tiny details. The cuts in the bottom case, the engraved portion of the weight that can be seen inside the keyboard case, down to new takes on mounting styles that have cemented themselves within this hobby. The board for the most part just looks like a standard rectangle, a clean OG looking TKL, but only when looking closer are you granted by a lot of interesting details. There's something that a lot of people won't care about, especially when it's things like the bottom weight or things in the case that you can't see once the board is built. But for me, if it's something that I'm spending this much money on, I love the little details and the reason behind them all. Things like this makes me think of what makes a custom keyboard premium in the first place. The feelings they evoke to you personally and the intent of the designer to develop the products they have. I've already touched upon the influence of music on the designs of Bion Lanier, but this is really something that is fully integrated into the brand identity, combining this with other things that the designer thinks are cool and are overall inspired by. I might be a bit biased here, but I've already got my merch on ready. Words like mutation, genetic, evolution, a word sprinkled throughout the branding. It gives me this very HR Geiger type feel, crossed with a very futuristic cyberpunk aesthetic. The themes of evolving and mutations are something also integrated into the keyboards themselves, which leads me to the most recent smaller releases of the Bias R2. 
Now, the board had its initial release and has since released in far smaller quantities with special qualities that distinguish them from the second round run. My favourite ones of these are the Genetic Vault boards, which at the time of recording only three boards have been posted up on here, but they all contain unique colours and all have different coatings. I think the nickel coated bias is stunning and it really fits with the whole look of the brand. This also is something that isn't commonplace and in a world of nicely machined boards with text engravings, having something a little different is pretty damn cool. I'd love to hear how this thing sounds, so if you've seen a sound test somewhere, please link it for me in the comments. The latest small release where I picked up my bias was a powder coat run with four colours available. As beautiful as the loud orange is, I love the idea of pine green to match with plants and I think I made the right choice for myself. The boards also have this acid pattern weight, something that you don't tend to see with other boards. I think this one's probably quite a love it or hate it feature, but I'm all here for it. I have always loved the look of custom patina weights and this thing for me hits that spot while having something that has come directly from the designer themselves. Looking into future releases from Bion, I think we're in for a treat. As he continues to push design boundaries throughout his boards, boards like the, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this one, <laughs> which at surface level could be passed to the sides as a Jane copy, actually features some very intricate designs along with interesting implementations of hardware into the design of the board itself. This is something that I've always liked on Matrix Customs and so get excited when I see them other places. But using them as some sort of eyes for the Demogorgon looking dude on the bottom of the board is super cool to me. There is something about keyboard designs that have a real sense of meaning behind the choices that is super important to me as a consumer. Again, it all comes back down to purpose. I think it fits in the same realm for me as fashion or art and wanting to express yourself in a certain way. But not only this, the importance of the design to the designer themselves. Especially something like the bias that was somewhat of a passion project that has now led to a larger number of people knowing the brand name and looking forward to future releases. Since Covid and people adopting this hybrid approach to working, the home office is another space that I want to be able to match to the rest of my interior choices. When it comes to keyboards, both form and functionality are extremely important. At this point, I know that I can take a custom and make it sound the specific way that I want, for the most part anyways. So being able to put something on my desk that fits into my desired aesthetic is really important. But I'm also a massive Apex Twin fanboy, so that probably has something to do with it as well, right? <laughs> While most end games have a sense of history behind them, or lore that places them within the hobby as one of the greats, a keyboard like the Bias is an end game to me over something like the Unicorn, due to the reason behind all of the choices in the design, the overall styling of the brand, and how I think it lines up to me as a person. We all like to express ourselves through whatever we do, and I think the keyboard hobby is no different. Hell, we've got anime boards, tons and tons of K-pop boards now designed as one-off commissions, so for me, my preference in sound and lining up to other things I like outside of keyboards, the bias ticks all of the boxes. Now that's all I had on the bias, do let me know what you think of the board and what makes the board specifically worth having for you. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Socials are all linked down below, thanks for watching and I will see you nerds in the next one. Peace.